headquarters is strategically located at the western end of Auckland's urban waterfront. It covers 37 hectares of reclaimed land and 3.3 hectares of wharf area, with a history of maritime industrial uses. It is currently halfway through a 30-year redevelopment, and once completed, it will look something like this. This level of development intensity reflects not only the desirability of its location for both commercial and residential uses, but also the very high costs of infrastructure provision and the remediation of contaminated ground conditions. The quarter will eventually house 3,000 residents and a similar number of workers. 10 hectares of public open space will include a destinational headland park, together with 2.5 kilometres of waterfront promenade. Auckland is well known for its harbour and for recreational boating. At the western end of the city waterfront is the largest marina facility in the southern hemisphere, bookended at the eastern end of the waterfront by the container port, barely visible in this view. The motorway in the foreground snakes along the base of the cliff edge that marks the original shoreline, highlighting the extent of reclamation for the commercial waterfront in the middle distance. This original shoreline, outlined in red in this image, comprised low cliffs and two bays, shaded in blue. These bays were lost to reclamation at an early stage, with Commercial Bay at the eastern left-hand end of the image becoming the future downtown, while Freeman's Bay to the west became Victoria Park, an important recreational space at this end of the waterfront. Opened by the city mayor in 1905, it was at that time a waterfront park, with commercial boats visible in the background in this historic view. But further reclamation in the early decades of the 20th century was to quickly sever this connection between park and water. In this view, from 1912, the construction of the eastern seawall of what was to become the Wynyard Quarter is evident as a first step in the reclamation process. Early uses of this new land focused on the timber trade, supplying the rapid expansion of Auckland's inner suburban housing areas. However, by the 1930s, the predominant land uses had become the slipways and boat building facilities evident along the western edge of the reclamation and an increasing number of petrochemical storage tanks. By the 1960s, the extent of these tanks saw the area widely referred to as Tank Farm, a moniker that is only now fading with recent changes in the way that bulk fuel is transported and stored, and the progressive removal of these tanks. But the marine industries along the western edge remain and will continue to have an important presence in the future quarter. This image shows quite clearly the significance of Victoria Park as a green lung in a highly urbanised environment and the potential to connect it with the newly emerging Wynyard Quarter. This potential connection is represented by one of the three axes that are fundamental to the urban structure of redevelopment proposals, as set out in an urban design framework prepared in 2007. Here the park axis, appropriately shown in green, connects Victoria Park via a street-based linear park to the proposed Headland Park. Equally important is the waterfront axis, shown in red, which extends from the commercial port in the east via the downtown waterfront and across the Viaduct Harbour before reaching Wynyard Quarter. The western part of this axis takes the form of a pedestrian promenade, with vehicles limited to those servicing waterfront activities. A shorter third axis, the wharf axis, seeks to respond to the oblique shape of the headland by extending the alignment of a former industrial wharf back into the built form of the first of the development blocks, extending it through to Beaumont Street, a street that serves the marine industry sites along the western edge of the quarter. The point where all three axes intersect will have particular significance within the quarter. With this framework in mind, it's time to explore the emerging quarter. I've had the good fortune to be involved in the evolution of this part of the Tamaki Makara waterfront since its inception about 15 years ago. We're starting our tour at the land-based end of the Daldy Street Linear Park. Across this busy arterial route lies Victoria Park. 
the connection at the moment is by pedestrian crossing, although some people have argued for a land bridge to make a strong connection between Victoria Park and the green corridor that will lead us to the sea. It's worthwhile work, walking this, this corridor as far as we can, although at this stage it's not yet complete. Bullaby Street Linear Park has been created by purchasing a 20 metre wide strip of land from the adjacent development sites. It's been designed as a multi-layered space with some big moves and some smaller moves. At the larger scale, a series of eventually mature trees will mark the progression from land out to sea. At the smaller scale, there are a number of designed features that invite occupation and allow connections in an east-west direction as we move to, from north to south. An important feature of the linear park are these rain gardens. And they've been positioned between the carriageway of Gordon Street and the remainder of the linear park. Obviously they serve an important function in treating stormwater runoff before it reaches the harbour. Behind me here are the first of a number of structures that mark where the east-west streets cross the linear park. This one happens to house a water pumping station. And behind me is a small park, no more than a quarter of a hectare, designed for use by future residents. A feature of this park is the ground contouring, and that's been introduced to provide vantage points for pedestrians on the activity within the linear park and elsewhere. Another important feature of the linear park are these sinuous edges to the inside faces of the rain gardens and the associated meandering slow pathway in contrast to the direct route along the street alignment. This helps to transition between the formality of the street and the informality of the linear park opening onto the lawn areas. In the background we see another structure that marks the crossing of the, of the linear park by the east-west streets. This one is, we call this a folly, and it's designed with children's play in mind. At this point, the Daldy Street Linear Park crosses to the other side of the street because it was not possible to purchase the 20 metre strip of land needed to continue it on this side. However, that's turning out to be a blessing in disguise because eventually we'll be making a stronger connection with the green park that's proposed for the headland. We've arrived at Jellicoe Street. This is the last of the east-west cross streets before we reach the edge of the harbour. It's been designed as a slow speed street for traffic and for pedestrians. Again, rain gardens feature in this street to enhance the pedestrian experience as well as for stormwater control. We also catch a glimpse of the city centre in the distance. Jellicoe Street has particular significance as a transition point between the higher scale buildings to the south and the lower scale buildings on the harbour edge. Jellicoe Street terminates in Karanga Plaza. The relatively small size of this plaza, less than a third of a hectare, 
belies its significance. In Te Reo, the Māori language, karanga means a Māori chant of welcome. And it's at this point that you arrive at the quarter from the downtown waterfront by crossing the lifting bridge. So it's appropriate to arrive in a space which speaks of welcome. From this position on the lifting bridge, we can see the strategic significance of Karanga Plaza, its important location at the start of the Winyu Quarter. We can also see the tidal steps alongside it, a very popular gathering spot, and if you're brave enough, you can take a swim. On two sides of Karanga Plaza, the space is flanked by two quite important buildings. On the seaward side, the Viaduct Event Centre, currently home to Team New Zealand in their defence of the America's Cup, and on the land side, the recently completed Park Hyatt Hotel. The importance of these tidal steps as a focal point for special gatherings is nicely illustrated in this image. We've arrived at North Wharf. This part of the pedestrian promenade is on direct alignment with the waterfront axis. Until recent times, this was a place where goods were transferred from boats to trucks and trains and vice versa. And the evidence of this former life can be seen with these wharf bollards and with the railway tracks that still remain on this part of the promenade. This is also home to Auckland's fishing fleet. However, we won't see any fishing vessels here today because they've been relocated to the other side of the Wynyard Headland for the duration of the America's Cup event. However, we are promised that after the America's Cup, they will return. And they're a very important part of achieving an authentic working waterfront. This historical image of fishing boats at North Wharf reveals the original utilitarian purposes of the wharf. The appeal of an authentic working wharf edge is something that we are wishing to retain. In this view we see the former cargo shed of North Wharf repurposed for F&B uses. We are now at a point on the North Wharf Promenade where the waterfront axis seen here and the park axis meet. This will become a pivotal point on the waterfront. However, construction hoardings associated with preparations for the America's Cup event prevent us from fully appreciating the significance of this location as part of the land to sea journey. The future development of this space of intersection will need to continue the experience of the Dordie Linear Park. These sketches show the role of the Linear Park and connecting Victoria Park to the future Headland Park, with several smaller park spaces along this route. Marking the significance of this point on our waterfront is assisted by the strong presence of concrete silos and steel tanks that have been retained as an integral part of the public realm. The open steel frame, referred to simply as the gantry, is not part of this heritage, but has been introduced at this point to provide an elevated outlook as an edge to silo park. Uh, and as a vantage point onto the events within the park. From the upper level of the gantry, we begin to appreciate the drama of this location and the way in which retained tanks and related infrastructure give a strong identity to this part of the public realm. A new space is being created amongst the tanks 
and this will include a shade structure with references to, to traditional weaving patterns of the sails of ocean going canoes and provision for children's play. From the western end of the gantry, we gain views to the outer part of the headland along a street that will continue to provide access to both the future park and the existing marine industries. The gantry also provides a vantage point into Silo Park itself, with its structuring element of reed beds that are part of the water purification strategy within the quarter, to the landmark concrete silos at the western end of the park. Beyond this we catch a glimpse of the West Haven Marina water space. Although virtually empty in these views, Silo Park is a popular event space. While Silo Park has a particular significance as the western termination of the waterfront axis, with the downtown in the far distance, it is a popular destination in its own right. It is perhaps the strong identity of the park as a celebration of the industrial heritage of the quarter that is the reason for its popularity. Supported by a strong programme of public activities, from summertime outdoor movie, movies projected onto the big silo, to evening markets to mention just two of the ways in which this space comes to life. But the Wynyard Quarter is not just about the attraction of being at the water's edge. Back from this edge, the grid of streets developed to serve the industrial origins of this part of the waterfront has resulted in some big urban blocks, as can be seen in this historical view. Opening up these larger blocks for redevelopment has required the introduction of a network of laneways, while pedestrians are able to use all of these lanes, the strategy has been to prioritise pedestrian movement within the east-west lanes, while vehicle movements are confined to the north-south lanes. In a number of cases, these laneways also provide view shafts to the harbour beyond. Terra Marama Way is one such east-west route, and in this particular urban block it provides access to both new buildings and refurbished industrial buildings that have been retained as a record of the history of this part of the waterfront. An important part of the future character of this and other laneways has been the decision to keep as many of the former industrial buildings as possible. Here we are looking towards a former engineering works that has been repurposed as offices for a major architectural practice. Inside the building, the refurbished interior has retained its gantry structure as a record of its former use as an engineering works along with the industrial forms of the sawtooth roofs above. The future north-south lane will add another level of pedestrian permeability to this Wynyard Central superblock. This image shows how the new use has been inserted into the refurbished existing building in a way that allows the original building envelope to remain as a key part of the experience of the new. While the sawtooth roof profile of the former engineering works building, seen here in the background, and its modest scale provide a welcome variety in the emerging context of much larger buildings, other buildings have a scale that makes their integration with new neighbours something of a challenge. The tiny Halsey Traders building will eventually form an edge to the forecourt of a much larger building, ensuring that the old is not engulfed by the scale of the proposed new buildings has been a particular challenge in this case. The Wynyard Quarter redevelopment is still very much a work in progress. The quality of both the processes and outcomes to date has been recognised by several international waterfront awards and by numerous design awards for individual building and public realm projects. Its waterfront spaces aspire not only to host major public spectacles, such as the forthcoming America's Cup events, but also to be places for individual enjoyment and relaxation. While it is little more than halfway in its redevelopment story, we can expect that Aucklanders will be looking for future outcomes that are at least as good or better than those which have been so far delivered. Hopefully, there will be an equally positive story to be told about 15 years from now. <laughs>